Hello everybody and welcome back to another ASMR video. Um, as you can tell, I got a haircut. Um, that has nothing to do with the video, but I just thought I'd point it out. Um, and before I get started, um, I want you all to look at this picture. This is, uh, this is what my room looks like right now <laughs> as I'm recording. It's actually kind of warm in here because I have so many lights. Um, so even even though it doesn't really look like there's a lot, I mean you couldn't tell it, but um, yeah, there's a lot a lot set up in here. So anyway, um, today for this video, I'm going to be showing you Settlers of Catan. Um, just gonna try to do a little bit of a uh, just tell you a little bit about the game, maybe an introduction to it, show you how to set it up, things like that. I'm not going to go in-depth about the rules and everything. Um, but this is Settlers of Catan. It's an uh, award-winning game of discovery, settlement, and trade, apparently. Uh, I got this for Christmas. Last Christmas. Yeah. Um, and a lot of my friends play it. That's how I got into it. Was um, my friends played it, showed it to me, and uh, really enjoyed it. So we have quite a few copies of it. There's actually expansions and stuff, um, but I just have the original. So I'll go ahead and show you the inside. Actually, just, I'll show you the back real quick. Hopefully, I don't dump all the pieces everywhere. So there's the back. This just shows the pieces and stuff. Let's go ahead and open it up. So inside we have game booklet, game rules, and almanac. I'll show you a little bit of this. I'm not going to really read much. I might read some, but let's move this real quick. So it's just your basic rules. Um, I'll read a little bit up here. It says, Dear Settlers, before you invite your fellow gamers over, we suggest that you read over these game rules. Uh, peruse the short game... <laughs> peruse the short... Peruse the short game overview on page 16, the back cover, and study the game board illustration, and then read the game rules in, in peace. This will not take long. The actual rules, red pages, are quite short. You do not need to read the almanac at the back of the book, the gold pages, quite yet. Use the almanac for reference when questions come up during play. Now you are ready for your first adventure on Catan. Have fun settling this new land together. So, these are the red pages it's talking about. And it just gives you the basic rules. There's only like four pages of this. So, turn overview. Turn in detail. <laughs> I'm really hot in here with all these lights. Um, and then see, here's the almanac it was talking about. Which are the gold borders? And it gives all the different things, and I'll, I'll explain some of these. Um, that's why I'm not going to read the instruction book. But I'm just uh, showing you the book because I know some people like the sounds of the pages being flipped. And there's 
was in the back that it was talking about. <clears throat> so, that's the instruction booklet. It looks like it also came with a bumper sticker, which I'll never use. It'll just sit there. And then, um, just adds for more for the other games. Like I said, there's lots of expansions and stuff. So, these are the pieces. Actually got a little bit of a, a mess here since I flipped it over. And put it back in there. <clears throat> so um, I'll just show you some of the pieces um, and I'll set it up for you. So there's all these uh, six sided shapes here. Um, that's forest. This is coal. Got another forest. Um, these are rock or brick. They give you brick. And I'll tell you more about this once I actually uh, get into it. Um, and then there's planes. What does that give you? Oh, that gives you sheep. <laughs> and then there's... Uh, this is wheat. I don't, I don't know exactly what it's called, but it gives you wheat. Um, so there's a bunch of these. Like I said, I'll show you more what all these things do. So that's those. And then here's the borders um, that we use to set up. As you can see, they have harbors on them. And I'll explain those. Um, I'll show you some of the other stuff, here, but I'll go ahead and set this up first. <clears throat> so they have numbers on them, on the corners. I can get it to focus. Uh, there's numbers there, hard to see. So you put them together based on their numbers. Um, two. One. Six. And five and four. Got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Now, when I set it up, uh, different people do different things. Um, and I, I haven't actually read the, I don't remember exactly what the rules say, um, but I like to set it up randomly. Um, you can actually do the harbors randomly as well. There are these little pieces here. Oh, it focuses and then it loses it. So there's these pieces. 
and you can put them over top the harbors like this. I'm going to go ahead and get all these out. I'm going to need them anyway. Okay, so here's all the harbors. And I'll get to these. So what you can do is you take oops, you take all the harbor pieces, which I've got here, and you flip them. Instead of being on this side, you flip them over to this side, and you put them on these. Um, but you want to mix them up first. And I like to do, this is the way I like to set it up, and it's more random. Um, I think there's a specific way that you can set it up, maybe more competitive rules or something. But I like to do it this way, it makes it random. Um, so you do that, and then I like to do the same thing with these. So you can see in the back of them don't have anything. So I like to mix them all up. Just so I don't know what's where. And then we'll put them on here. Of course I'll have to flip them over a bit. So we got brick. There's a little bit of a nick in that one. Uh, two flames. Or which give you wheat, whatever they are. Fields. This is the desert. Brick. Forest. Forest. Plains, forest, coal, plains, wheat, plains, coal, forest. flip these over. And so these will represent um, the harbors. Instead of using the numbers that are on there, you use these. So it gives a way to do it random. Like I said, you can just use the ones that are on there if you want to do it that way. But I like to do it random. Um, and then Same thing with all these. Now these are all these little round pieces have numbers on them. 
Um, and these correspond to dice rolls. This one doesn't have anything. I'm not sure what that's for. Um, I feel like I've known what those are for, but there's some without any. So it's three. Three. Um, and then like eight. And if you notice, some of these are um, the red, and those means that they have a higher odds of being rolled. Um, so like six has the best chance of being rolled. So I'm going to put all these face down. So that I can set these up randomly as well. So now that I've got all these, all these are going to go on each of these hexagons. And like I said, this can be set up. And this is all me doing it randomly. Um, but I think there is like a specific way you can set it up. I don't remember what these are for. What the blank ones are for. I feel like they have some purpose, but I don't remember what. Oh well. Um, so you get a number on all of them, except for the desert. And so like I said, these correspond to dice rules. And then And here, we have uh, the robber. <laughs> and he goes on, he goes in the desert, which is here. Uh, so that's how we set it up. And so I guess I'll explain to you. I'll show you a little bit. Oops. I'll show you a little bit else. What's in here? Comes with two dice. Got a yellow one and a red one. settlements and then roads and stuff. And I'll explain more about those. But we got blue ones, white ones, orange ones, and then red ones. Um, which means that you can play with four people. And you can get expansions and play with more. Um, but it's, it's a two to four person game. And I would recommend playing with at least three. But I've played two before. Um, and then we have cards in here. These correspond to each of the colors. So there's the orange one, the red one, blue one and the white one and these are just um, that you give to each player so that they can uh, remember how to get each thing so each of these have the same thing on them they're just for each player Mm-hmm. 
So blue is my favorite color. So I'll just show you the blue one. So if you look on here, if it focuses, to build a road, you need a wood and a brick. I wish it would stay in focus better. Um, and then for settlements, you need a sheep, a wheat, a wood, and a brick. For cities, you need three coal and two wheat. And for development cards, you need a sheep, a wheat, and a coal. Um, and as you can see, these are worth two victory points, settlements are one victory point, and roads are worth none, but I'll show you how you get points with those. So the objective in the game is to get ten victory points first. Um, if you get ten victory points, then you win, and like I said, you can get them from getting settlements or cities. Um, to build cities, you upgrade from settlements, so you have to build a settlement first, and then you have to build a city, and it will, um, you replace the settlement. So that explains all that. <clears throat> now there's also Longest Road, and Largest Army. You get Longest Road and Largest Army. Uh, well, Longest Road you get by having um, an unbroken road of at least five segments. And then if somebody builds a longer road, then they get that. And as you can see, Longest Road is worth two victory points. And so is Largest Army. they're worth two victory points apiece. And you get those from getting development cards, which if you remember, this is how you get your development cards. If the camera focuses, well, that's how you get the development cards. There it goes. Um, and that's where these come into play. So these are all the cards. Uh, so these are all the resource cards. I'll explain more about them in a minute. development cards. And so, when you buy development cards with your pieces, um, with your resources, um, you get a random one. So they're all the same on the back, as you can see. Oh well. Hold on. Okay. So I still got these are resources. They belong in the other stack. So these are all the development cards here. Uh, so you have to shuffle them up. Actually, I'll show you what they are first. But you get them randomly by buying, buying them on your turn. And you can get a knight card. And 
and what the night card does is you get to move um, you buy development cards and you can play them anytime on your turn um, but you can only play one a turn and it has to be on your turn and you can't play them the turn that you buy them um, but, but to play them you just flip them face up and you say I'm playing this card uh, so the night card what it does is it lets you steal a resource from one person randomly um, or hold on it lets you move the robber first um, so you get to pick where you want to do it and say you move the robber here uh, and then you can steal from somebody that has an adjacent house or a settlement or city so if they have a settlement or city on any of these, you can steal a random resource from them. And then it cuts off that resource. Now I'll explain more about that in a little bit. But So that's night cards. There's a Monopoly card. And I don't know if you'll be able to read it or not. Focus. I don't guess my camera focuses that close. Um, when you play a Monopoly card, you announce one type of resource, and all other players must give you all the resource cards of that type. Um, and then there are other cards that are just worth victory points. It's worth one victory point. Um, and I think that's all of them. Oh, no, there's one more. There's the Year of Plenty. And like I said, these are all development cards. When you buy them, you buy one randomly. Oops. It has trouble focusing. Um, where you can take two any resources from the bank and add them to your hand. They can be two of the same resource or two different resources. Uh, then there is road building. Place two new roads as if you had just built them. victory points like chapel, library. So you can get victory points just by getting those cards. Like I said, because you buy them um, and you pick them randomly because they're shuffled up. Or you can get victory points by getting longest army, largest army, which means if you have three knight cards, you get largest army and then if somebody else gets more than that then they take largest army from you um, <clears throat> so you would shuffle those up and like I said you would buy those uh, so that's largest army so whoever controls largest army at the end of the game gives you um, two victory points And then the same thing for Longest Road. So I'll show you um, the pieces. little wooden blocks. Uh, so these are the cities, the larger ones. These are the settlements, the smaller ones. And then these are the roads. So when the game starts, each person gets uh, 
two cities and two roads or uh, two settlements not cities and you can only have as many as you have pieces here so if you like run out of roads you can't get more roads um, so you would take turns placing them where you want and say well C6 has the highest odds of rowing and there's three different materials here resources so I might want to put my city there and my settlement there and my road there and then the next person would go and he would put his somewhere now you can't have um, they can't be adjacent to each other they have to be at least two away like that um, so you would take turns setting up like that um, so maybe Maybe I'll want to come over here as well and go this way. And that gives me access to everything. Each resource, six. I think I have each resource. How many are there? One, two, three, four. Yeah, so if I had this position, I'd have access to these two resources on high odds and then these three resources. And this one's on high odds. So that would be a decent setup. And so all players do that. <clears throat> you take turns. Um, the last player gets to put both his at the same time. Um, because his last and then it goes forward. So like if, if there were four of us, I would set one. And the next person would set one up to the fourth person. But then the fourth person would set his next one. And then it would go back to the third person, the second person, and me. So I would get first and last pick. At least that's the way I do it. I'm not exactly sure if that's the way that everybody does it. So each turn, <clears throat> um, you take a turn rolling the dice, whoever's turn it is. And so I got a six. And so that would mean anybody that has a settlement adjacent to the six gets that resource. Um, and that's the banker's job. But that can just be whoever. So like I said, we've got all the resources here. So I would get, so here's brick, sheep, and wood. This one gives you coal, this gives you sheep, this gives you wood, this gives you brick, and this gives you wheat. And so those correspond to these on here. So you say you wrote a six, everybody that has that would get wheat. So you'd get one wheat, and um, There's also second six, which is over here. So I would also get one sheep. So you can see how having um, having your settlements on the higher odds to roll, you can get more resources. So then on, on your turn, you can trade with other people to get resources, and it's kind of like Monopoly, where you can just say, "I'll give you this much for this much," or uh, you can spend your resources to buy things. Say if you bought a road, then you would <clears throat> give up your brick and your wood, and you would get a road. And you can place your roads. They have to be connected to your other roads. Um, I'm trying to think what else there. So if you have, these are cities, you get one resource. If you upgrade them into your settlements, then every time you would roll like a six, or a five or a three, you'd get two of that resource. Um, and the settlements are worth two victory points, or the cities and the settlements are worth one victory point. 
Um, and so I was telling you about the robber. If the robber moves, say if somebody gets the robber, you can either get the robber by rolling a seven, because if you notice, there's no robber here, no seven, or by playing a knight card. And if you get that, um, if you get to move the robber, you can move it to any place you want, and then it blocks that resource. So say if I moved it here, then anytime you roll a six, anybody adjacent to that wouldn't get that resource. Um, and then you'd also get to steal, like with the knight card. So rolling a seven or getting them playing a knight card does the same thing. Uh, and then the uh, the harbors here. So if you have, say I have a road connected here, and then I have either a settlement or a uh, a uh, settlement or a city connected to where these little these little. Uh, rocks come down, then you can use the benefits of this, and then instead of trading with other people, you can trade with the bank. So you can trade to a sheep, if you want of anything with this one, or with the question marks, you can trade three of anything for one of anything, two bricks for one of anything, two wheat for one of anything, two wood for one of anything, or two coal for one of anything. And so that's a way to trade and get uh, to get what you need. I think that's the way it works. Either that, it's the other way around, where it's two of anything for one sheep. But I don't think that's it. I think it's I think it's like two of anything for one. Let me check the instructions real quick. Uh -huh. Maybe you'd be on your harbor. Uh, harbor's allows you to trade resources more favorably. In order to set control of a harbor, you must build a settlement on a coast intersection, which borders the harbor. See more on maritime trade. Okay, so... Okay, so yeah, you get to use... Um, I was correct the first time. So three of any, or for like three, two sheep for one of any. Oh, and another thing I forgot um, is that you can do, you don't need a harbor um, or settlement or harbor location. You can trade <clears throat> four for one for anything, um, which says here, the most basic and unfavorable exchange is the four to one. You may trade four identical resources to the supply in exchange for one resource of your choice. So you can do that at any point in time. So you have four brick and you want a wheat. You can trade four brick to, um, to the bank for one wheat. But the harbors give you more favorable trading. Um, so like two for one, two for one, or um, three of anything. Uh, Yeah, I think that's... I'm going to check that again. Yeah, that's the way it works. I think that's it. Let's see. There's a built one special harbor for each type of source with the same symbol, so it is important to build on the type of special harbor you can use fairly frequently. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so it's like two sheep. If this sheep, then it's two sheep for one of any. So that's pretty much the gist of the game works. Now there's I'm putting up other little rules and stuff that I probably didn't go over. Um, but that gives you an idea of how to play. And like I said, once you get 10 victory points, then you win. Um, so say you have, you know, five settlements along this road, um, and a city, that'd be five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
And then maybe you have um, a victory card that's, or a, you have one of these, um, a development card that's worth the victory point. Um, you can say I'm playing this one, and you get the point. Actually, uh, for the victory point ones, uh, you just reveal those at the end of the game if you have 10 points. So you don't have to specifically play them, I believe. So, that is Settlers of Catan in a nutshell. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And you might, uh, if you haven't played Settlers before, maybe you'll want to look into getting the game. I think it's like $40 or something. It's not really cheap, but um, I guess board games aren't the cheapest anyway. Um, this would be one I would recommend picking up. So I hope you all enjoyed this introduction to Settlers of Catan. And I'll see you all in the next one.